Today I'm going to expose three of the most common side hustles you've probably been involved with or looked into, and since I've been heavily involved in all three of these and have already wasted all my time and money making all the mistakes, I'm going to show you all the red flags to watch out for so you don't have to waste yours. And the first side hustle is affiliate marketing. The concept behind this business model is simple. Companies have products and services they want more customers for, and one of their strategies is to allow pretty much anyone to obtain a free link to their products, drive customers to that link, and on every purchase, the company will give them a commission. Sounds pretty simple, right? So here's the brutal truth they all won't tell you because they're trying to sell you something sort of affiliate marketing course. I, however, have no course to sell you. So the first huge lie that most affiliate marketers want you to believe, again, so you'll sign up for their course, is that you go to a brand's website, sign up for an affiliate link at zero cost to you, all true by the way, and voila, you start making tons of money. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but you'll need an actual marketing strategy, some financial investment, and a ton of focused effort to make this work. There are essentially two broad strategies you can take to drive traffic to your links. The first is paid or organic SEO-based marketing, and the second is paid or organic content-based marketing. For the first of these two strategies, you'll need to create a blog or create what is called a landing page that's optimized for Google and other search engines. The idea here is that when users are searching for tips on how to select certain products or services, your blog or landing page will pop up if it's optimized correctly and they'll be directed to information followed up with a call to action to buy your affiliate product. And this is honestly a pretty good way to do affiliate marketing a lot of people use. For the second of these two strategies, you'll need to... Yeah, you'll need to do something like this. You'll need to get on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and all these other platforms, build an audience by creating high quality content, and then include your link in the bio or description. <laughs> Easier said than done, trust me. Let's examine both of these strategies and realistically assess what level of time, energy, effort, and money it's going to take in order to make what level of profit. For the SEO-based approach, you'll definitely need an ad budget of at least $200 per month to start. You realistically won't have the skills yet to design quality ads, so you might have to hire someone for that. You'll need to either develop a landing page or sign up for a service that will provide you with one, along with a sales funnel, and you'll need to develop blog writing skills as well as SEO skills. For the content-based approach, you'll need to learn content creation, which if you're starting from scratch, you might want to speed up your process by hiring a coach or taking courses and trust me on this one unless you want to cry yourself to sleep every night trying to create content through trial and error and pushing your mental health to the brink yeah I, I told you this is like kind of real talk here for both strategies one of the main mistakes people make is getting a new sale or a new customer and then never seeing that customer again because let's be honest they don't care about you I mean do you really care about me I, I hope so they just happen to buy through your link so you'll also definitely need to sign up for an email marketing service to retain the new customers you get who bought your products, you can retarget them for future marketing campaigns, and you also may want to invest in a CRM or customer relationship management system. Already more work than you thought, right? So then let's talk about the money. Let's break down what it really takes to make a profit. Let's say with all the tools, services, and knowledge you need to make this successful, your monthly fixed costs are about $300. Not bad, honestly. Well, that means that with a $50 product at a 20% commission, you'll need 30 sales per month to break even. But what does it take to get 30 sales, you ask? Great question. Every industry is a little bit different, but the standardly accepted click-to-purchase ratio show is 500 views or page visits to one sale. So then basically it's going to take you 15,000 page visits or video views to earn the $300 it will take you to break even. So then just do the math. If you actually want to make $300 profit, you'll have to turn that into 30,000 visits or views. And keep in mind, in order to do that on our SEO based approach, your spending on ads might have to increase. Honestly, I don't have as much direct experience on this aspect. So any of you who do have more knowledge on variable ad spend costs, let me know in the comments what's a realistic number. At the end of the day, affiliate marketing can be very lucrative. But really Realistically, you're going to have to put in a lot of time, energy, and effort to make it work. It's not the get-rich-quick scheme most of these scammy salespeople on the internet are trying to sell you. Sorry. And that brings us to the second side hustle, network marketing. Now, this is a business model I've had 10 years of experience with, and so I can talk about this industry with my eyes closed. I've looked at over 50 different compensation plans. I'm also not involved in the recruiting end of it, so I have literally no incentive to sell you on anything or whatever. Like anything, there are pros and cons, and I'm just going to give you the raw truth without sugarcoating anything. Simply put, network marketing is similar to affiliate marketing in that you're selling another company's products or services, but it has the added element of being able to recruit other sellers into a sales team and then you get a percentage of their sales for training them. Now, this industry is super controversial. You might even look at the structure of the business and say, that looks like a pyramid. And that's because in some sense, it is. And while there are many valid criticisms of network marketing, this isn't really a fair one because the shape of an organizational structure, just like if you're looking at a corporate structure, isn't really indicative of how the organization operates or the dynamics of the organization. I mean, just look at pizza. And who doesn't love pizza? Just on its face, there's nothing inherently wrong or unethical about selling a product, recruiting somebody else to sell the product, and getting a percentage of their sales as compensation for training them. This or something like it is done across a 
wide variety of industries. Instead, usually the problem lies within the business practices themselves or the incentives that lie within the structure of the organization. The pros of this industry, like affiliate marketing, are that it usually takes very little capital to start. There's usually a business plan or marketing plan already in place for you, as well as somebody who is above you in the organization who will train you at basically no cost to you. But if you're considering launching a business in this industry, please watch out for these three red flags. Number one is upselling. You know, and this is a big one for affiliate marketing too. I see it all the time on social media where somebody is selling an affiliate marketing course for let's say $7 and you know, you think in your mind, oh, it's just $7, so I might as well sign up, it's super cheap. But then they throw a package your way that's $100 and then, you know, maybe another one for $200 to kind of add on some added benefit and then, oh, you got the special one-on-one -on -one or, or super coaching course that's $1,000 or something. And they tell you getting all these packages is gonna unlock access to the real money-making strategies. Well, okay, okay, I admit it. From a sales perspective, there's technically really nothing wrong with upselling in and of itself. I mean, when you order a burger, you're probably gonna get a fries and a drink, right? But a business opportunity isn't a lunch combo. The problem is when it comes to doing business, whether that's affiliate marketing, drop shipping, network marketing, traditional e-commerce, whatever that is, the person introducing you to the opportunity should lay out transparently on the table all the costs, all the facts and figures, and not surprise you later with extra trainings, courses, fees. This is a major source of frustration for me. I see it everywhere, and it's just something to watch out for. Number two is team culture. Network marketing at its core is a heavily people-based business. If you do this business, you'll spend a lot of time with your team, whether that's at trainings, home events, whatever. This, I might add, is a perfectly reasonable aspect of human behavior. I mean, all good companies incorporate team bonding and team culture into their organization. However, the issue comes when, often subtly, you're encouraged not to use your critical thinking skills. Yes, there is an aspect of any business system in which you literally just have to follow the business plan and the business system because that's the way it is. I mean, franchising is that way. But if you start to detect you're in an environment where you're discouraged from asking lots of questions, using your critical thinking skills, or being taught to accept something as just unquestionable dogma, then, and this goes for job environments too, it's a good idea to stay away. And number three is the product or service itself. This also applies to affiliate marketing, brand deals, and literally any business you're in, honestly. Never sell a product you wouldn't personally use, with or without the business, never. And with respect to network marketing specifically, if there's not a healthy margin of profit to be made on selling the product, or you just get like points or something dumb like that for selling it, then just run away. You're really wasting your time. This is crucially important because what this implies, if this isn't the case, is one, the majority of the money made must come from recruiting others into the organization rather than getting new customers. Number two, people at the bottom of the organization can mathematically never make enough profit to justify really staying in the organization. But then let's also calculate what it would actually take to make an extra $300 a month as a total newbie. Compensation plans in the industry are also different. So I'm gonna base this on personal product sales alone rather than organizational volume. Let's say your monthly costs in terms of admin fees and trainings total $200. I won't include your monthly product orders as a cost because as we already said, these should be products and services you would use with or without being in the business. To break even, then you would need 20 customers who order $50 monthly at a 20% commission. In terms of relationship-based sales and affiliate marketing sales, the ratio tends to be a little bit higher because that's how word of mouth is. So in this case, a reasonable ratio might be 20%, but let's make it 10% to be very conservative. In this case, you would need to talk to 200 people about the product or service to get your first 20 customers and to make $300 per month net profit. Therefore, it would take talking to 500 people to get there. Is it worth it? I mean, that's really up to you. So overall, this can be a good business model, but instead of getting hyped up and excited about it, I want you to go into it with eyes wide open. This is a very front facing business, meaning you're gonna have to constantly talk talk to people, call people, book appointments, constantly. Deceptive marketing tactics are really rampant in this industry, so be sure to get all the facts up front. And if the person introducing you to the opportunity can't actually show you the facts and figures and the numbers behind how you're gonna get to your target income, then just walk away. The third and final side hustle we'll talk about is online coaching. So I used to run a test prep agency for SAT, ACT, the whole alphabet soup of test prep. I quickly realized the huge income potential of this industry, but there are definitely pros and cons to making money this way. First though, start by looking at the skill sets you actually have. In fact, if you just look back to whatever you majored in in grad school or undergrad, there's most likely some niche in which you can specialize that meets some demand that's out there. For example, did you study anthropology? Sure, there might not be a huge market of people looking for anthropology tutors, but chances are your writing is probably pretty good and people are looking for coaching on that. Did you study 
economics? Well, there are people looking for financial literacy coaching. Did you go to medical school? Well, chances are you could probably teach the MCAT. You get the idea. There are three top pros of this industry. Number one is it's very low cost to start and operate. If you go solo, honestly, the most it'll cost you is some materials, maybe like a course book. And if you choose to partner with an agency, they may even give you the curriculum and materials. Number two is it's relatively easy to find clients. You know, if you're already known in your network for a certain thing, for knowing a certain thing, for a skill set, people know you graduated in a certain area or whatever, then all it really takes is just calling people up and saying, hey, you know, I'm tutoring in this area. Do you know anybody who's looking? And usually you'll find a few people that way. This is honestly one of the best ways to start because referral marketing is one of the most powerful ways getting testimonials from others who have used your services. And this way you could probably even charge more because they don't see you just as another tutor in a sea of tutors. Number three is you can do this flexibly from almost anywhere. I no longer run an agency, but I've literally worked from different time zones, different countries. I've been able to choose when and how much I work. I can make up to 3,000 extra per week just for 20 hours of work. There are three things though you should be aware of before getting involved with this industry. Number one, obviously you'll have to have a skill set people will actually pay for. And there's a lot of pressure on you to get results to justify the price. In the case of my own experience with SAT, ACT prep, you must help them increase their score or they're not gonna come back and they're definitely not gonna refer you people. Number two, if you're starting your own agency, there's a lot of competition and there might be a lot of costs involved with getting started. Listen, you're gonna spend so much time on the operations of the business that you're really not gonna have time to market it and grow it that way. So if you wanna market it, you might even have to rely on some outside services or advertising in order to really aggressively find new customers. That's why my personal preference is a combination of informal referral marketing combined with working with agencies. I get students, they get a portion of my fee, and I avoid a lot of headaches. Number three, this is not passive income. You might have the brilliant idea to eventually start a course around what you're teaching and automate it so people come on and you know watch the videos sign up for the course and then obviously that's generating passive income for you and I agree I've personally benefited from purchasing and watching video courses however if you've ever worked with any kind of coach I don't care if that's personal training business coaches social media marketing coaches you'll probably agree with me that the highest value comes from that one-to-one -one interaction where you can get your tailored problems solved and get direct feedback from someone at best a video course can give you a general overview and kind of a broad brush. So at some level, in order to stay competitive in this market, one-to-one -one coaching is going to be key. At the end of the day, so many gurus out there will tell you you should use a side hustle to make lots of money and then you can pursue what you love. They'll tell you focus on making the money first and then you can go out and do whatever you want. But I've been through that kind of thinking. I focus on doing things I'm not truly aligned with because I've thought, oh, this is a vehicle to get where I want to go. But what I found is even if you're doing any kind of side hustle or new business, you're going to be spending lots of time on that and you really do need to love it or at least enjoy it to some extent. It shouldn't be just the thing you do to get what you want. It should be part of what you actually want as well. If you want to learn the exact process and how to achieve that balance, then be sure to watch this next video.